The original Siege 53 was a Marine Corps requirement and a Marine Corps program. And the soundness of that basic requirement, I think, has been confirmed by the fact that we started with that CH 53A. Now we're currently prototyping the next generation CH 53. So somebody did his homework correctly. 53 is the, is the heart and soul, though, of, of what the Marines do. The others are in support and add to all of it. The 53 is the key. You take a look at the pictures of the 53 from literally before I was born. The 53A was designed in the 60s. It started flying in Vietnam. That's almost 50 years ago. And you can see the evolution of the A to the D and the D to the Echo and the Echo. That was a huge leap there. Marines could still fight the war, war with the air ground team and do what they do in the expeditionary mode because they got the 53. Without the 53, you cannot fight the war in the expeditionary mode and do what Marines do. You cannot do it. You can't get there from here. You don't have enough, you don't have enough lift to do that. This weapon system or aircraft was involved in missions of great importance to the United States of America. We launched in probably 89 uh, miles inland and, and picked O'Grady up off of a high point and flew him, flew him out of there. On the way out, took uh, several rounds of anti-aircraft and surface to air missiles with good pilots, a good crew, and a good aircraft. We were always able to accomplish the mission and get back home. Think of it if this person is sitting there and they are miles from home, on a mountaintop somewhere, it's cold, it's raining, they've been out there for two, three weeks, haven't had a hot shower, haven't had a hot meal, and all of a sudden they hear that very distinctive sound. And if you've ever heard a helicopter come aboard, the first thing you do is you look up in the sky because it's that, it's that distinctive and you know that that sound means home. Safety, survival, and home. In reality, the 53E was a proven, reliable workhorse. Over the course of the years, the Marine Corps started utilizing it more and more. Operation Desert Storm, as well as Operation Enduring Freedom, the 53E was getting used extensively. The hours were getting put on the aircraft. It was a workhorse. When the Marines are out there doing their mission, there's no choice, they just need to get it done. And so the Echo as it ages requires a lot of maintenance and a lot of support to, to keep it up and running. On my first staff tour ever, did nothing but a fleet aviator up until that point in 2003 and it was immediately evident we needed to do something about the 53. We needed to make it more reliable, it needed greater capability, it was gonna to come to the end of its service life. The main driver for the program was to lift a 27,000 pound load and take it 110 nautical miles at sea level. The Marine Corps Ship to Objective Maneuver concept at that time called for um, being able to get an, an entire regimental combat team ashore in an eight hour period of darkness. It's now, I'm here today, I'm picking up, I've got to fly 110 nautical miles, I got to be point A to point B, I got to move people and equipment um, at accelerated speeds. I needed something that had, what did I just tell you, reliability like your car? had a KPP of 90 some percent, and the cost of ownership was driven down so we could do what Marines do for another 30, 40 years. What was also critical was carrying that message every place it needed to go, having it backed up by all of your analysis and all your data. We had to convince the Navy, we had to convince OSD, we had to convince Congress of what we needed to do in order to, make, to keep the Marine Corps' heavy lift capability viable. I think the, the Marine Corps has been uh, fantastic from the perspective of understanding the capabilities that they need to meet their mission, balanced by the understanding of the complexities of the development program. It's not just the, the helicopter, all the pieces, all the processes and the tools that we use, right from developing the requirements through to testing the aircraft, the tools are all advanced. It is a very big undertaking and in order to be successful we have to work as a team with the military.